Hi, this is Tara Green. It's January the 1st, 2020. I want to welcome you to this broadcast here uh, for New Year's Day for the new decade. I'm starting a few minutes early just to make sure we're all good to go. Uh, I'm Cosmic Intelligence Agency Agent 129, and usually this is done through their page, but Yulia, the CEO of uh, Cosmic Intelligence Agency, is busy getting set up for some symposiums uh, in Australia there, which you should definitely check out and follow up. Uh, there's nine really wonderful astrologers who are going to be doing different seminars, so check that out. Um, so I'll just wait a minute. Now, I am able to see you. Usually when I do this, it's done on Zoom, and I can't see who's there. So if you're here following live, uh, please say hi. Okay. So I'm going to wait a minute to get started. Okay. I'll wait another minute. <laughs> so I hope you had a, a wonderful New Year's. Uh, I'm here in Toronto, Canada. And so you know that 2020, it's a big year. It's a transition year in numerology. Okay, somebody's there. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> I can see you there. Um, I'm just going to wait a minute for more people to come. Wishing you a happy new year there, Stacy. That's great that I can see you. Um, so, 2020. Uh, numerology 2020 reduces to the master number 22. And the number 22 in the tarot, there are, of course, 22 major arcana or symbols or trumps. I don't like to say trumps these days in the major arcana and so 22 is also zero and zero is the symbol of the fool in the tarot so there the fool okay so the fool zero and 22 is the wisest of all the cards in the tarot there's the fool running around um so we have to be wise fools this year okay the fool is enlightened already enlightened the fool lives in the moment absolutely it is the trust and innocence of the child so don't be afraid to be the fool because you are all already enlightened you already know everything you've already been around the block like a million times that means you've lived many many past lives so there's really nothing to fear and really living fully in the present is what enlightenment is really all about now if we add two and two together we get we get <laughs> the number four. Okay, so the number four in the tarot. This is also the root number, the life path, the soul number of 2020, the fool, which is the king or the emperor. Now, this, this is the Toth tarot. This is the major arcana, major deck that I use. So it is. it also has astrology symbols on it. So the emperor or the king is also like the sign of Aries. So it symbolizes new beginnings, okay? So new beginnings. So Aries, fiery, initiating. It's masculine energy. Uh, we are going to be starting brand new. And it's number four also has to do with the four elements. Using the four elements, working with them, fire, air, earth, water, our bodies are all made up of those elements. So it's like in the Chinese system where they use feng shui, we have to use those four elements. The fifth, uh, they used to use five elements in the Western tradition. The fifth was called ether or spirit. And now, of course, in the scientific age, they've dropped that fifth element. But of course, it is always there. Okay. So the number four, power. Always about power and also about building a foundation. Now, the number 22, back to the fool here, is also the symbol. Um, uh, it's called the master builder number. Now, that's a very interesting synchronicity, too, because as you know, we're heading for a historic conjunction of two planets, which is the planet Saturn and the planet Pluto on January the 11th at 22 degrees Capricorn, another synchronicity here. Uh, Saturn is called the building planet, so it would also be considered to be the master builder. So key questions for this year are, what are you building? Now, in the tarot, the number 22, the fool, sorry, the fool, and the emperor, are two sides of the same coin here. There we go, two sides of the same coin. So in the old European fairy tales, the king or the emperor always had a jester or a fool by its side because they're really two sides of the same coin. Okay, so 22 and fool are equal. So can't take yourself too seriously if you're gonna be at the top of the heap or you think you're the, the big kahuna because power can come and go very, very quickly. Okay, so, all right. Now, what I'm gonna do here, uh, there's usually a format to this, and I do read out what the astrological aspects are. Hi, for people who are just joining me, I'm Tara Green, uh, Cosmic 
Intelligence Agency, Agent 129, I will read out, because it's the beginning of the year, what the major planetary cycles are, and then we'll get to January cycles, and then I'm going to pull one major arcana from those 22 major cards, okay? So you'll have to wait, because I go from Aries to Pisces. Now, the major planetary cycles, okay, what's going on this year? Venus and Mars both turn retrograde this year, so that's very important, because they haven't done that in a little while. And there's that historic Jupiter, sorry, Saturn Pluto conjunction January the 12th. Did I say the 11th? There's an eclipse on the 11th. No, the eclipse is on the 10th. Okay. Um, Jupiter and Pluto make three conjunctions this year. Now, those are really beautiful, very powerful conjunctions because uh, Jupiter is expansion and growth and trust and innocence and Pluto is wealth, soul wealth. So when Jupiter and Pluto come together three times this year, it's extremely powerful. Okay. Especially for all you Capricorns, because you know, this is your year. Now, the best time to move ahead in 2020 is when all the planets are moving in direct motion. And so that starts January the 10th when Uranus turns direct until February the 16th. And also from March the 9th to April the 25th. So you want to mark those dates on your calendar. It's like full speed ahead, all the planets are moving direct. Okay, hi to people that are just joining me. Now, um, on June the 24th and the 25th though, all six planets will be retrograde. Okay, that's in Greenwich Mean Time. And then on September 9th to the 13th, all six planets are retrograde plus Chiron, that's seven. So you may wanna also mark those dates on your calendar as dates when you want to not be moving ahead, not be initiating anything. And then what else have we got here? Okay. I'm going to go into what's going on now. So January the 10th and the 11th, there's going to be a cancer, what they call a penumbral lunar eclipse at 20 plus degrees Capricorn. So sorry, at cancer. All right. So cancer Capricorn, uh, it's really all of those cardinal signs, of course, all Capricorn people are really in the focus, especially right now, okay? On January the 12th, that historic Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which only happens once every 35, 36 years. For those of you who are born in 82, 83, this is really powerful because this conjunction actually squares the conjunction that you had when you were born and that time it was in Lyra. So it's a major turning point. Saturn, again, ending limitations, obstacles, and Pluto, the soul, uh, the world soul, the collective unconscious. So it is an end. I keep saying it's the end of the patriarchy, uh, end of a lot of corporate structures, but there's also a lot of blowback. So a lot of the conservative energy is Saturn and Pluto, which can be very dictatorial. We can see that in the US and in the world these days. So it's, it's heavy. It's not light. I can't sugarcoat that for you. Okay. But if you're a Capricorn with planets at 22 degrees, very close to that, this is a major turning point in your life. So it's a time to let go and build new beginnings. Okay. On February the 16th to March the 9th, Mercury starts the first of its three retrogrades this year from Pisces to Aquarius. On February the 20th, July 27th, and October the 12th, Jupiter is sextile Neptune. That's a very nice, very creative uh, aspect. Uh, the spring equinox is on as early this year, even though 2020 is a leap year. Uh, June 19th and 20th, spring equinox. That's the beginning of the year, actually, not this date. This is an artificially created calendar date. The, the, traditionally, the new year always began when the sun entered zero degrees Aries, okay? Um, now, March 21st and December 17th, Saturn enters Aquarius. So Saturn will actually dip its toe into Aquarius on just after that spring equinox, which is very interesting. So we get a little peek into the future there. On April the 4th, June the 30th, and November the 12th, Jupiter actually conjuncts Pluto and Capricorn. Again, very wealthy, very expansive. There could be uh, big changes in corporate structures and in the markets. Now, Pluto always ends... It always slays, I always say. Anything old or outworn, okay? So be mindful of that too. A lot of astrologers are, of course, predicting a big economic slowdown, okay? Uh, starting actually in January. Um, so May the 13th, June the 25th, Venus is retrograde in Gemini. No, that is an absolute no-fly zone for weddings or even engagements or anything to do with money. Uh, every The world revolves around money, so Venus rules money. So you're going to really have to watch that period. As Venus goes retrograde there, 
uh, of course, a lot of old relationships, old communications will come back at you. So really wait. I know people are planning weddings ahead. Not really the best time to get married under that Venus retrograde. Now, June the 5th, the 6th, uh, there's a Sagittarius lunar penumbral eclipse at 15 degrees of Sag. You know, there are six eclipses this year. Only one is total. Okay. On June the 18th to July the 12th, Mercury is retrograde in Cancer. Again, all Mercury retrogrades, nothing to be afraid of. It's not a disaster. It's just a time to rest, to renew, and to review. So in Cancer, you know, stay at home, you know, get comfy, do some work around your house. So on June the 20th, it's the summer solstice when the sun enters Cancer. On June 21st, there's going to be a Cancer, an annular solar eclipse. Again, zero degrees. It's a very important, it's one of the world points. On July the 4th and the 5th, Fifth, there's a Capricorn lunar eclipse at 13 degrees. Now that's conjunct the U.S. sun. So that is a very, very big date in the U.S. Conjunct the fixed star Sirius. So a big date if you have planets at 13 degrees. Uh, Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, and Libra, you're also going to be affected by that. Now, on July the 11th, Chiron turns retrograde in Aries until December the 15th. On September 9th and the 10th, to November the 13th, Mars turns retrograde in Aries, the sign it rules. So this is like really big for Aries. Uh, you're gonna have to learn some patience. I can hear the brakes squealing now. Uh, some disgruntled Aries there and also Scorpios as your leading planet goes backwards. So again, back to the drawing board, okay? September 9th, 10th to November the 13th. Slow down, not a good time to initiate anything. So it's good to know these dates in advance. Mark them on your calendar so you know when to move ahead and when not. Okay, now, uh, September 22nd, the autumn equinox begins. October 13th to November the 3rd, Mercury is retrograde from Scorpio to Libra. Again, those degrees are hot spots. You don't want to move ahead with things at that time. On November 29th, which is my birthday, actually, and the 30th, there's going to be a Gen Gemini penumbral lunar eclipse, 8 degrees Gemini. So again, Gemini, Sag, uh, Virgo, Pisces, those degrees are all hit. Uh, in a grand sorry, cross there. On December the 14th, there's a total solar eclipse at 23 degrees Sagittarius. That's the only total, total eclipse this year. It's actually the most powerful one. On December the 19th, Jupiter will enter Aquarius. Okay, And then on December 21st, 2020, there's that famous historic Jupiter-Saturn conjunction at zero degrees Aquarius, which ushers in a brand new 20-year cycle. So a lot of astrologers are saying if we can make it through to December the 21st uh, on the winter uh, solstice there just after that, we'll see the new age that a lot of people are predicting, the age of Aquarius, because of course Pluto will follow. Saturn is going to be in Aquarius all of 2021-2022, uh, and then uh, Pluto will follow in 2023. Okay. Um, I'm also going to mention out-of-bounds planets here. Out-of-bounds planets are when the planets go beyond the boundaries of the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer, and they are also times when things don't operate the same as usual. I found this really fascinating, actually. So Venus will be out-of-bounds from April the 1st until June the 1st. Mars will be out-of-bounds between February the 9th till March the 2nd, and Mercury is going to be out-of-bounds May the 15th until June the 8th and December the 12th to January the 4th, 2021. Okay, now that's the overview of the year. Okay, welcoming you all who come on now. I'm going to talk about January now, January specific elements. Okay, so on the 2nd, that's tomorrow, Mercury conjuncts Jupiter and Capricorn. Great day to put your thinking cap on to really get your long term plans going. Okay. On January the 3rd, Mars will enter Sagittarius, okay? So that'll lighten up the energy a little bit, Mars and fiery Sag. Um, it's a good time to plan any travels, to think about publishing, to start getting your work out, going back to school, good energy to go back to school. Sagittarius loves higher education. On January the 6th and the 7th, Capricorn Sun sextiles Neptune and Pisces, and that's a nice grounded plus dreamy energy. When our sextiles are easy aspects, when planets are 60 degrees apart. Okay, so that's good for dreaming, concrete dreams. January the 8th, Mercury sextiles Neptune and Pisces. So Mercury is following uh, also that one. That doesn't make sense, actually. Mercury squares Neptune and Pisces. Okay, um, 
There we go. I made a mistake there. Okay, so Mercury squares Neptune and Pisces again. Good for dreaming. Squares are not always bad. Okay. On January the 7th, Mars in conjuncts Uranus and Taurus. So an in conjunct is when planets are 150 degrees apart. They do not work well. They don't even see each other. It's like it's your invisible enemy or something like that. So uh, it just means people are going to be really irritable that day. Mars, you know, it's Taurus. They're stubborn. They don't want to, you know, in Sag energy, they just want to keep going. They're in the moment. Uranus and Taurus, no, we're dragging our feet. So, you know, push me, pull you kind of energy. On January the 10th, the sun conjuncts Mercury and Capricorn. That's always like, again, Mercury is going to be what they call Kazemi or at the heart of the sun. That's a good time to, again, at the exact moment that it happens, very tight orb. You know, it's really like imagine your consciousness. That's what Mercury is in the heart of the sun, Capricorn sun. Very hardworking, responsible, concrete reality. It's a big reality check right now, folks, with, you know, seven planets in Capricorn. Now, January the 10th, the lunar eclipse. Um, at that time, it's 11.21 a.m. PST, 2.21 a.m. EST, 7.21 p.m. Uh, GMT. Again, first eclipse of the year. January the 10th, Uranus turns direct in Taurus. So anything that's been burning, back burning, new ideas, new projects, freedom, revolutions, they all start to move forward on January the 10th, okay? Uh, on January the 12th, there's two actually big conjunctions. Mercury conjuncts Saturn. So again, Mercury, planet of thinking, communications, conjuncting Saturn, which is stabilizing. It helps you to focus, helps you to get the job done. Uh, very disciplined. It's a very disciplined time right now. Uh, on January the 12th, again, that major Saturn-Pluto conjunction, 22 degrees Capricorn. Um, again, look at where 22 degrees Capricorn are in your natal chart to figure out how this is aspecting you or affecting you personally. On January the 13th, the sun conjuncts Pluto. That's one of the best days of the year because the sun is solar, the solar logo, solar riches. Pluto is the lord of the underworld. So it's like bringing all of the underworld, the shadows out to the light. So we might see that in the news as, again, more secrets, sex trafficking, money laundering, anything corrupt coming up into the light, okay? Now, January the 13th, Sun conjunct Saturn. Again, these are very serious, heavy days, good to channel Saturn, so you make those long-term plans. On January the 13th, Venus enters Pisces. Now, that's really nice. Venus is considered to be exalted in Pisces because she displays this incredible, compassionate, spiritual, dreamy, romantic, idealistic energy. So, it's very easy to project what you want to see with Venus and Pisces. Very, very creative. You want to do any concrete poetry, writing, serious, dreamy stuff, actually. And, and also, it'll tune in your psychic energy, uh, which would be really nice during that time. So, um, Venus and Pisces sextiles Uranus and Taurus on the 15th. Again, very good. Think outside the box. Do something radically different, okay? Um, we might see women. Uh, moving ahead also because Venus and Pisces has to do with the ocean. So there could be, you know, a lot of energy now, but we really have to get these oceans cleaned up and protecting uh, sea life. Now, on the 16th, Mercury enters Aquarius. Again, we're starting to get into that higher mind, higher consciousness, energy, liberation, freedom, detachment. Mercury in Aquarius is like being a surgeon. It's like, I don't have any emotions. We're just thinking about what needs to be done. Okay. A little bit robot-like too. Uh, very good for any high-tech people, though. On the 17th, Mercury sextiles Chiron and Aries. So we can talk about or look at our wounds and our defenses, but without getting emotional about it. On the 18th, Mercury in Aquarius squares Uranus and Taurus. Again, Mercury in Aquarius, it's a forward-moving sign. Uranus and Taurus wants to hold back. But again, these squares are turning points, you know, in time. January the 20th, the sun enters Aquarius, so we're going to go into Aquarius season. On January 21st, there's almost no aspects, so this is a total chill-out day, and it's rare when there's no major planetary aspects happening. If it's your birthday, well, you get a totally new clean slate on January 21st. On the 22nd and the 23rd, the Aquarius sun squares Uranus and Taurus. Again, we're repeating those squares. Um, to Uranus and Taurus, which is really not moving ahead very much. So again, again, back to the drawing board, rethinking what you want to revolutionize. January 23rd, Venus and Pisces, sextiles Jupiter and Capricorn, which is a really beautiful, exalted energy because Venus is exalted in Pisces and Jupiter is the ruler 
of Pisces in traditional astrology. So even though it's considered, Jupiter's considered to be not strong in Capricorn, I still consider that a good aspect. And then, okay, January the 24th or 25th, it's the new moon in Aquarius at uh, four degrees of Aquarius. So again, we're starting to see the elements where we're moving into this Aquarian energy. And it's also the Chinese New Year, okay? And it's the New Year of the rat. And the rat is really intelligent. And the rat is about riches. So from the Chinese astrology point of view, this is going to be a very wealthy year. On the 25th, Mercury sextiles Mars and Sag. Again, thinking um, very creatively. It's good for teachers, judges, philosophers, uh, anybody who has uh, Sagittarius energy. On the 26th, Venus and Pisces squares Mars and Sag. Now, for the next three days, the 26th, 27th, and the 8th, that may as well be Valentine's Day in my books because Venus and Mars and Neptune are all bound up together. So Venus is considered to be a human love sign. It's the sign of women, of beauty, of harmony, of the arts. So it's considered to be human love. And Neptune is considered to be the higher octave of Venus. So it's about unconditional love, um, like mother love, spiritual love, soulmate love. You know, it's oneness. So during those three days, it would be really great to do some ceremony, to balance the masculine and the feminine. Venus and Pisces squares Mars and Sagittarius. Mars and Sagittarius is very honest. It's about truth, justice. So there be maybe some major issues. Mar Venus and Pisces, the downside of Venus and Pisces is it's too dreamy, uh, wants to avoid things. It's about addictions as well. Doesn't want to deal with reality wants to avoid it. And Mars and Sag is like, yeah, we're going straight to the truth. So there can be, again, some secrets coming out, some things that have been hidden coming out in the world uh, because Sagittarius is a universal or an international sign. But Venus conjuncts Neptune. That's very romantic. January 27th at noon PST, one of the most romantic days of the year. Very good. Again, visualizing, uh, doing into intuitive work, psychic work, sending energy. And then on the 28th, Mars and Sag squares Neptune and Pisces again. So that pressure is on to work with that energy. Okay. All right. Now we get to this part. <laughs> okay. So the way this works. Uh, so for January, what I do is I have my special crystal here, uh, my very special Herkimer diamond crystal, which looks like a skull. And I take that crystal and I use it to cleanse these cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune in to Aries. I'm going to shuffle the cards. Okay. Shuffle the cards for Aries. So I'm thinking about you, Aries. You know, Mars will be retrograde this year. You're all going to be squared by all this later Aries by all the Capricorn energy this year. Okay, so Aries, here's the card you get. Okay. So the Aries, this is what you need for January. This is the card of the Empress, number three. So the Empress she is Venus, and then if you can see Venus, Venus is symbol there. So the Empress, again, Aries, you need to bring more love to the table, okay? Now you are Mars, ruled by Mars, so this is Venus. So this is about bringing new relationships into being, using your own inner feminine. Everybody has an inner masculine and feminine, so it's about creativity. She's usually symbolized as a pregnant woman or the great mother, um, your own mother, there may be some issues with your mother, women in general, money issues, Venus rules money, she rules beauty, harmony, the arts, so maybe you need to, you know, kind of it's the new year, Aries, maybe you want to get a makeover, you know, that would be a nice thing to do, but definitely it's about being more feminine, and more creative, you might be helping others or acting as a mentor, uh, or conceiving your own children, ideas, you know, starting a new business, uh, initiating something new, all of that Capricorn energy is kind of pushing you uh, into doing that. So you want to use the energy of the Empress to explore more art, more creativity yourself. Might be a good time to start drawing or painting or working with fabrics or anything like that, redecorating your house. So Aries, number three, the Empress. Okay. And now you got to be patient because I'm going to go one by one here, so Taurus. Now, Taurus is, early Taurus is, of course, uh, born in the first two, three, five days of Taurus. You've got Uranus there pushing you forward like the big cosmic cattle prod, and that will move forward during 2020. And again, all of that Capricorn energy is beneficial as a trine for all Tauruses, all the universe sign. Okay, so, all right, Taurus, you get the fool. Again, so this is zero, the number zero, which is also 22. So Taurus, you're gonna play a major 
part in January here. You have to lighten up. You have to, I know you're into security and stability at all costs, but at this point you have to take some risks. The fool is about stepping off the cliff, leaving the safety net behind, getting out of your comfort zone. That's Taurus. You always want to be in the comfort zone. You know, you're going to have to be prodded out of there and you have to trust that no matter what, you're going to be okay, that you can trust the universe, that the universe has your back, Taurus, okay? You know, you know what to do. You have all the tools, Taurus. So really, maybe you should question, why am I so afraid? And what is the worst that could happen? You know, because once you kind of look at what the worst that could happen is, you realize it's very unlikely to happen, and you can prepare. And if anything, Taurus likes to be prepared, as all Earth signs do. So could be a new relationship, a new job, a new opportunity, something totally unexpected. You need to be centered in the present. That's what the fool is all about. The present is the greatest gift that anybody can have, living fully in the present, not worrying about the past, not worrying about the future, just staying fully in the present. So again, it's like being like a child. You need to play more. You know, take your inner child out to play, indulge your inner child. You know, just ask yourself, you know, Tauruses have good gut instinct. Ask yourself, where do I need to go right now? And to trust that. That's really trusting the wisdom of the fool. Okay, so Taurus, zero and 22, the fool. Okay, so Geminis. Okay, so Geminis, what have you got going on now for January? Okay, all right, now. Gemini, you have the number seven here. This is the symbol of the chariot. So the chariot, the number seven, is associated with the sign of cancer, which is the sign following you. So Gemini, this is about literally getting into the driver's seat, you know. This is about feeling centered, just like the symbol here. You have to imagine that you are this figure here, the knight uh, in gold. Now, the golden armor is really important because it always symbolizes spiritual protect, protection and energy. So maybe you've got some holes where you're leaking energy, Gemini, rushing around a bit too much. This means you need to sit back. You need to get into the driver's seat. You need to feel like the world here is not spinning you around, but you're containing it. So this is a great visualization, Gemini. Get yourself in the driver's seat. Related to cancer, it has to do with your home, your family, your stomach, watching what you eat, what you nurture, how you nurture others, your mother, very literally cancer rules the mother, children, if you want to have children, this is or conceive of anything new, this is a good thing to do. So it's bringing in more emotions. Cancer is the waters of the womb, it's the emotion, it's the ocean. And so this card is also associated with the victory lab. So maybe you need to give yourself some kudos, Gemini, you know, for the hard work you've been doing. Um, I think Capricorn has helped a lot of you to work harder. Um, could be improving your home, changing your diet. I know it's the beginning of the year. Everybody has good intentions, New Year's resolutions. So this would be a good one. Can be very up and down, though, emotionally, like a wave, you know. So you may be feeling more moody. You may need to really pay attention to the moon cycles as well. Cancer is always associated with the moon. So... Sitting back, you know, it's a feminine sign. It's about receptivity, okay? So Gemini, you get number seven, the chariot, okay? And paying attention to the laws of cycles, okay? All right. So Happy New Year, everybody who's still joining here. All right, now I'm going to do Cancer. So, of course, all Cancers, you've got all of those Capricorn planets if you're born in the last decade or the last 10 days of Cancer, pulling you into this heavy opposition. Okay, so Cancer. All right, Cancers, you get the number five here, number five, called the Hierophant or the High Priest, okay, or the Pope, traditionally. Okay, again, this is the non-traditional, this is the Crowley deck, the Toth Tarot. So the number five, um, this card really is a card of challenges, which I'm sure you're feeling right now, Cancer, with all that Capricorn energy, having to take care of business, and Capricorn doesn't like to be emotional. So for Cancers that are very emotional, this can be a very good thing because you can contain your emotions right now and maybe put them in a little box. Um, now, the number five is sacred to Venus. She does make this five-pointed pentagram in her eight-year cycle. So again, this is about bringing the love, which Cancers usually have no shortage of. They love to nurture others. But this card can be challenging because the number fives are just challenging in the cycle of the tarot. So 
The challenge here, Cancer, is to listen to your higher self. This is what the Pope or any high priest, rabbi, imam, shaman even, you can interpret this card as a shamanic card, represents someone who's connected directly to spirit, who gets their knowledge from their holy guardian angel, from their higher self, or from the, the major archangel. So this is what you need to do, okay? This is what you need to do. So Cancer, the more you go within and listen to your gut instincts, because this card is associated with the sign of Taurus, the better, okay? And it's also about speaking your truth. So this card related to the sign of Taurus rules the throat chakra. Um, the number five is the fifth chakra as well. Color is indigo blue. Use your throat, speak up. On this card, it's very feminist. They show the goddess Isis. Uh, here is the high priestess in front of the high priest. This is where the real spiritual knowledge comes from. Okay, so Cancer, hold your ground, speak your truth, okay? And remember, you have to also use the four, it's the four non-cardinal directions there helping you as well, or the four fixed signs, okay? So, Cancer, number five, the Pope, the High Priest. Okay, so now, Leo. Okay. Now, you know, certain signs have no planets in them these days. Leo is one, so you may be feeling a bit left out, actually, but don't fear. Soon everything will be in Aquarius opposite you. Okay. So Leo, you get the Wheel of Fortune here. So how can you take advantage of this current energy? Number 10, the Wheel of Fortune. This is like the planet Jupiter. Now, uh, all the Capricorn planets are 150 degrees away from the sign of Leo. That's called an inconjunct, which means maybe you're not seeing the opportunities that are there. Now Capricorn is traditionally a big business. Um, it's corporate structure. So perhaps you need to just Put your foot down on the gas and push that wheel a little faster right now. There are opportunities for you. The Wheel of Fortune is always good, always beneficial. It's always about uh, maybe you need to go to Vegas and gamble a little bit. Um, but Or maybe you just need to believe in yourself a bit more. Now, Jupiter also rules higher education. Maybe you need to make some plans to get some higher education, some new Courses under your belt. It could be traveling. Jupiter loves to travel. When's the last time you traveled? Maybe you just need to do this for pleasure, not just for business. So the Wheel of Fortune. Um, see the opportunities. You know, be creative. Take some risks. Think outside the box, Leo. Okay. Again, don't feel left out because no planets have been in Leo for a while. Uh, again, soon as the planets move into Aquarius, they will be opposite you. So take advantage of this golden opportunity. Leo, the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. So Virgo. Okay. Now again, Virgo is an earth sign. You are being strongly affected positively through trines from all that Capricorn energy. Okay. So Virgo. And of course, Neptune is opposite your sign too. Okay. So, all right. So Virgo, you get the card of the sun here, the number 19. This is the highest energy card in the deck. This is, how do you feel, Virgo? on a sunny day. Now, unless you don't like being in the sun, um, maybe you won't feel that positive about that, but generally most people feel pretty positive about the sun. So it's really about the inner sun. What makes you shine? Where can you shine? Where do you need to be in the spotlight? Where do you need to bring your light, your brightness, your creativity um, to your source? And what do you need to source within yourself to make yourself feel lighter, more positive, thinking positive thoughts? The sun. It's about playfulness. The two little children or little cherubs here are playing in the sun. So whatever it is you've had to go through, Virgo, no matter how hard it's been, now is the time to celebrate. You know that the light has risen again. You know, it's like after a total solar eclipse, people are totally relieved when the sun comes back. So Virgo, this is a time of positive energy. Maybe you need to go away. The tarot reader here is giving you permission to take a holiday. If you're up here in the north, you know, we're all sunbirds here. You want to go somewhere uh, in the sun. But generally, it's just exploring what makes you feel happy. And if it makes you feel happy, then do it. You know, Virgos are the servants of the zodiac. They're always serving everybody else. But now it's time to bring yourself joy, okay? Sun, joy, radiate your beauty, your intelligence, your power, your creativity. It's time to receive the love, Virgo. So you need to shine like the sun. Virgo, number 19, the sun. Okay. All right, so be patient. 
we're getting to Libra now. I'm almost halfway done here. It's a bit longer than normal because it is the new year. Okay. So Libras, what have you got? Now, again, Libras are being squared. They're in the 90 degree angle to all that Capricorn energy. And so, okay. So Libra, you get the death card here. Now, again, the death card, nothing to be afraid of. Number 13, death card is about change. Okay. Now, change whatever it is outworn that's not working for you, that doesn't fulfill your soul's needs. You know, I know you tend to err on the side of pleasing everybody else, but at this point you have to dig deeper. This is the sign of Scorpio, Libra. So Scorpio is the sign of the shadows, of your psyche, of the unconscious, of your soul. What does your soul really want? You know, not how you're defined by your relationships with the people you know, or even your social media structure, or whatever that is, your, your, you know, clout, whatever, I don't know, however they measure that these days. So the death card, use death as an ally. You know, the Native Americans had a, a saying, it's a good day to die, and they were ready at any moment to die. So that really makes you live in the moment, okay? So don't be afraid to end relationships that are not positive and toxic relationships right now. You feel much better. It's not as scary as you think. You'll just feel free. Death is freeing going into a new consciousness, a new state. Um, actually, death is part of life, you know, actually, it's just a never-ending cycle, okay? So, Libras, you know, maybe you need to change your wardrobe, maybe you need to get a makeover again, you maybe need to change your job, it's an ending. Use all of that Saturn, Pluto, heavy Capricorn energy, you know, to help you to move ahead, you know, death, rebirth, you know? You have to move ahead right now, Libra. So use death as an ally. Don't be afraid. Okay. Blessings to you. Okay. Now, Scorpio. So again, Scorpio, water energy in a sextile, positive energy from all that Capricorn planet. So Scorpio, what did you get? Okay. So Scorpio, you get the number two here. This is the symbol of the high priestess. This is the moon. So Scorpio, you need to pay attention to your intuition. You're pretty intuitive anyway. So during the month of January, really, really listen to your intuition and really pay attention to your dreams. This is the high priestess. She is the mediator between the worlds. She lives in two worlds at once. She lives in the rational world. She lives in the intuitive world, balanced, equal. You need to make sure you do that. Uh, it also gives you, I know you have a lot of emotional strength anyway. This card also conveys emotional strength to get you through trials and tribulations and difficult uh, periods in your life. But this is also lifting the veil of illusion. So for Scorpios, there may be something that even you haven't seen. I know that's hard to believe because you have that x-ray vision, Scorpio. So there may be some revelations very literally coming your way this month. Something you haven't seen about yourself or in relationship to somebody else. Number two is always about relationships. So pay attention to your dreams, especially, you know, the lunar eclipse uh, that's happening. Um, and the, the new moon actually on January 24th, 25th, and again, that solar eclipse. So those will be affecting you quite strongly. Um, again, spend time meditating. Spend time making sure your life is in balance, trusting your intuition above all else. So for Scorpio, this can be a very rewarding period. Do a lot of journaling. Uh, again, write down your dreams. Work with your dreams. Make sure that you have things in balance as much as possible. Okay, so Scorpio, the high priestess, you need to be the high priestess and draw down the moon. Okay, so Sagittarius. All right, so Sag. Okay. All right. So Sagittarius, you get the number 12 here. This is the card of the hangman. Now, for most people who aren't familiar with the tarot, they always find this a difficult or a complicated card, but this is the right side up for this card. The number 12, the hangman is the myth of the god Odin, the Norse god Odin, who voluntarily hung himself upside down by his ankle from the world tree or the tree of life as a means to gain new knowledge. And this is actually how in the Norse myths, the runes alphabet, uh, what people use is also oracle stones, the runes were brought into the world. And so it's really Sagittarian. I think you, you know you think you know it all, but at this point, you may have to think about things totally reversed. There's something that needs to be inverted upside down or you're not paying attention to your intuition or the earth 
you know, because normally we are upright and we think that consciousness light is all up, but this time it's down. So the consciousness is actually in the earth. So this is a time to really pay attention to the feminine values, the internal, the, again, the intuition, you know, maybe challenge everything you think about. That's also a shamanic practice to just challenge everything you think and do the reverse, do the opposite. It's kind of like uh, April Fool in a way. Uh, also, it's about not being a martyr. Maybe you need to change up the ways you've been doing things that aren't working for you and do them in a totally different way. Okay. So this is also about letting go. Okay. Surrender, surrendering your ego. It's also just perfectly fine to not know. Okay. That's one of my major mantras. I know nothing. This is the mantra for that. So if you're a Sagittarius, if you have a Sagittarius ascendant, if you have your moon in Sagittarius, if you have planets in Sagittarius, you can also use the hangman as your guide for this month. So learning when to let go and allowing the universe to do its work. You don't have to be in charge of everything Sagittarius. Just take a break. Let the universe take care of it. You're not in control of that anyway. Okay, so Sagittarius, the number 12, the hangman. Okay, so Capricorn. Now, of course, Capricorn, we know everything's in your sign right now. Okay. It's a pretty rare occurrence, okay? I think someone said that, you know, it, it's so rare to have all the planets in Capricorn plus Uranus and Taurus. It hasn't happened since 3,800 years even. So it's a very rare special occurrence for all these Capricorns. And you get the number six, which is really considered to be one of the most positive cards in the deck here, the lovers, number six. So the number six uh, is the six-pointed star, um, and it represents the balance of heaven and earth. I know most people associate the six-pointed star with the star of David or the star of Israel, uh, but it's actually a very ancient symbol that the Jews adopted. Um, so it represents what's called a Merkaba uh, or a sacred vehicle for going interdimensionally. So Capricorn, I know it's as real as real as real could be for you and everybody else right now, but you can use it as a vehicle to let you travel interdimensionally. Saturn, Pluto, the Sun, Jupiter, the South Node, you know, uh, Mercury, um, Ceres, and even Eros are all in Capricorn right now. So you must be loving this up. You must be feeling really great. You're in your element. Everybody's turning to you, Capricorn, to see what to do. So the lovers is also like the sign of Gemini, interestingly enough. So you have to really love yourself, Capricorn, right now. This is your turning point where you make your big mark in the world or you decide to change the world. Uh, or reconfigure it, rebuild it, however you want. Again, Capricorn is the 10th sign, traditionally associated with worldly power. So this is where you make some major decisions about your power, and it needs to come from a balanced position. It needs to come from love, not just from profits. Uh, and that's what's going to be coming down the pike, actually, later this year and into the next few years. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Gemini, the lovers, can be new relationships, new not just romantic, although usually it is romantic, could be marriages, engagements, you're deciding to settle down, you're signing on the dotted line, that Saturn, I'm gonna make a commitment to a long-term plan to love myself, actually, and to be equal, to make sure I'm balanced, that I can't just do all business without having the feminine. So this is good for women too. Women need to step forward and have a feminine form of relationship, a business that suits women's lives as well as men. So this is an equalizing factor here as well. So for Capricorn and for all the Capricorn planets, this is really good. The lovers, are you loving your career? Are you loving your job? You know, how's your reputation in the world? Those are all Capricorn concerns. You know, um, am I respecting my parents, my father, my family, my traditions, my roots? You know, do I see the other as equal to me? This is a very, very important actually aspect right now, equalizing power in the world. Okay. So Capricorn, the lovers. Okay, so Aquarius. Now again, Saturn is going to start to move into Aquarius. The energy is all going to come into your sign in the next while, Aquarius. So let's see what you got here. Okay, so this is very appropriate now. So Aquarius, you get number 17, the star, which is the sign of Aquarius. Okay, so this further emphasizes how important this Aquarian energy is. So the star. Um, this card is a really beautiful card. It really helps us to remember that we come from the cosmos, that we are star stuff, that we are the remnants of the Big Bang or the Big Bubble or whoever we got here. 
So every man and woman is a star. And so we need to star in our own lives. And so Aquarius wants everybody to be a star, though it's all about equality. So I would use this card as a guided meditation to go out at night and to choose a star in the sky. Stars twinkle, planets do not. And to visualize yourself after you ground yourself going out to a star. And once you're out there, you look back at the Earth and you see how tiny little precious blue planet is that 8 million, 8 billion people are on here. And you want to bring in higher consciousness, higher ideals to help guide the people so they understand what their cosmic origins are. You know, we are, however you want to believe we got here, certainly on a higher consciousness level, we're not just of the earth plane, especially it's hard, that's easy to believe with all the planets in Capricorn. And Saturn also rules Aquarius in traditional astrology, so you got to remember that. Um, so you want to bring down that stellar cosmic consciousness down through your heart chakra onto the earth plane. So Aquarius, what are you doing in your starring role here to help lead the world, to help be an innovator, a revolutionary, a freedom fighter, fighting for everybody's rights? Now, nobody has any right to be above everybody else, but everybody has the right to be. So you need, may need to innovate your life to get ready for this big change a year ahead. You need to think outside the box. You need to be brave. You need to be willing to stand up for yourself and march to your own drummer. So Aquarius, you are the star. Okay. So Pisces. Now we've gotten to the last here. Now with Neptune and Pisces. Neptune is actually bringing all of this beautiful spiritual consciousness in. Okay. So Pisces, you have the number 20 here. Number 20 here in this deck is called the Aeon or the New Age, which you could describe as an Aquarian age. So the number 20 is traditionally called judgment. Uh, in one deck I've seen it's called awakening, which is a nice way to put it as well. So judgment day. This is from the book of Revelations traditionally in the Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, and the angel Gabriel blows the trumpet on judgment day and the dead rise again. Now, so this is about waking up. It is, again, a card of rebirth, of leaving the past behind, of leaving old ideas behind, and allowing the new, the innocence, this card shows the divine child uh, being born. So again, bringing forth our original innocence, our original, you know, sense of wonder at the world, you know, rebirth, new beginnings. So Pisces, whatever you've been doing that isn't cutting it anymore, this is the time to let those old patterns habits, addictions, illusions, delusions, projections, the old creative projects even to die and be reborn. So they could be just recycled back to the drawing board again. So rebirth, again, for you Pisces people. Again, this Capricorn energy is being quite supportive to keep you grounded. So look forward into the future, your visionaries, your spiritual, your creative, your spiritual people. What do you see being born in the world and how can you help midwife it? You know, so I think this is really, really important. So, you know, as one cycle ends, a new one begins. We are at the end of a major old, old cycle going back thousands of years. And a new one is beginning and people are turning more to spirit, to their dreams, to their intuition for guidance. So Pisces, you really need to tune into that. So Pisces, number 20, of course, the number 20 is two. And we're in 2020, so that's also relevant. Got to pay attention to those numbers and that synchronicity. Okay. All right. So everybody who's joined me here, everybody's going to watch in the future. Thank you for being here. I want to wish everybody a very blessed New Year, January 2020. You can check me out on my own website. That's terratero.com. You can check me out on my blog at infinitynow.wordpress.com. I'm on Twitter. I tweet a lot. Actually, I'm on Instagram. Um, and so sending blessings to you here. I'm agent 129 of the Cosmic Intelligence Agency. Go check out these wonderful seminars that they're doing there in the next couple of days and sending you many blessings. Thank you so much.